Is it possible that for the first time ever, the Rock Hall got it right? With this year's inductees in near perfect alignment with the fan vote, is everybody finally happy? Don't bet on it. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announces the class of 2022, and as always, there's a lot to talk about. My reaction and analysis is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name's Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. Welcome to yet another strange year in the ongoing saga of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The class of 2022 has finally been announced, and as always, the list is full of both obvious and head-scratching choices. I'll leave it to you to decide which is which. So, let's check on the list. First up, we have the acts being inducted in the prestigious performers category, including Pat Benatar, Duran Duran, Eminem, Eurythmics, Dolly Parton, Lionel Richie, and Carly Simon. In the musical excellence category, we have Judas Priest and producers Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. For the early influence category, we have Harry Belafonte and Elizabeth Cotton. And the Amit Erdogan Award goes to music industry veterans Jimmy Iovine, Alan Grubman, and Sylvia Robinson. Congratulations to the entire Rock and Roll Hall of Fame class of 2022. Now, for the purposes of this video, I mainly want to focus on the performers category since, as I said, it's arguably the most prestigious category, not to mention the one that the annual fan vote is in support of. So let's rewind for a moment. Back in February, the Rock Hall announced the 2022 nominations, and the list was just as controversial as ever. Once again, we had a mix of veteran acts that seem long overdue, younger acts that make you wonder if they've earned it, and acts that some may feel fall outside the boundaries of what they consider rock and roll. Of the 17 nominees, 10 have made the ballot before, including six that were on the ballot as recently as last year. Incidentally, none of those 2021 nominee carryovers made the cut for induction in 2022 either. And that's one of the first surprises for me when it comes to the acts being inducted in 2022. I really thought at least one of those two in a row nominees would get voted in this year. Specifically, I predicted Rage Against the Machine would finally get the nod. This is the fourth time the band has been nominated in just five years which seems like an impressive statement about their current popularity among the voting members of the Rock Hall. I really thought this would be their year, but there's always 2023. As for the other nominees that didn't make the cut in 2022, I can't say I'm all that shocked by any of them. Beck was nominated in his first year of eligibility, but there was no doubt in my mind that he wouldn't be a walk-on. God bless Kate Bush, but with the Rock Hall being mainly an American institution, I think she'll continue to be a tough sell for the voters. Rockers MC5 and New York Dolls are both highly influential acts that deserve recognition, but I think they're just enough outside the mainstream that they may struggle to garner a lot of votes. In fact, those acts, as well as Devo, are probably better off hoping to be selected for a category like early influence or musical excellence. And then there's Fela Kuti. Shockingly, he landed in the top five of the fan vote last year. But perhaps I should use air quotes when I say fan vote for him, because the rumor is the massive support he garnered was almost entirely from his home country of Nigeria. Clearly, they didn't rally as strongly in 2022, because this time around, he ranked dead last. Speaking of the fan vote, here's another huge surprise. Every one of the acts that fans voted onto the official fan ballot also ended up being inducted in the class of 2022. And not just the top five, by the way. If you continue down the list of the final fan vote results, the acts that ranked 6th, 7th, and 8th also made the cut. In the history of the fan vote, I'm not sure if we've ever seen the final induction list so closely mirror the voice of the fans. I mean, just a couple of years ago, we saw Dave Matthews Band win the fan vote, but not end up being inducted. So again, this is a wildly unexpected result. But what was not at all unexpected was the way Duran Duran became the runaway winners of the fan vote. 
Throughout the entire voting process, the band dominated the vote, holding down the top spot nearly every day right up until the end. And if you look at the delta between them and second place finisher Eminem, it wasn't even close. I'll admit, I actually did think Eminem would see a bit stronger support than this, but then again, it probably says more about Duran Duran's fan base than anything else. And I have to say, hats off to Eurythmics. They were not one of my prediction picks for induction this year, and I was honestly surprised to see them make the cut, not to mention landing in the top five of the fan vote. Of course, the big story for the Rock Hall this year has to be Dolly Parton. She's pretty much dominated Rock Hall news for the past few months, starting from the announcement of her nomination back in February. Between Dolly Parton and Eminem, I'm not sure which act incited more cries of, that's not rock and roll. But in a surprising twist, on March 14th, Dolly herself chimed in to say that she wanted to decline her nomination because she didn't think she was rock and roll. Of course, by that point, voting was well underway and there was no practical way to remove her from the ballot. The Rock Hall opted to leave her in the running, and in spite of Parton's remarks, she still ended up ranking in the top five of the fan vote, as well as earning enough official member votes to be inducted in the class of 2022. And in fact, just a week before the inductees were announced, it seemed Dolly had a change of heart. She's now said she would accept the honor if she were to be voted in, so at this point, I think we should fully expect her to attend the ceremony later this year. As for Eminem, his induction in his first year of eligibility is really no surprise to me at all. He's one of the biggest selling acts of the past two decades and has arguably done more than any other act to bring hip hop to the mainstream, even winning an Oscar along the way. Of course, there will be many people who will say hip-hop is not rock and roll and does not belong in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And honestly, I do get that. But what I've always said is that hip-hop is part of the evolution of R&B. And ultimately, R&B was the genesis of rock and roll as well. R&B acts have been inducted into the Rock Hall since year one. And in my mind, it makes complete sense that evolution should be represented in the induction choices as well. All right, one more surprise I want to talk about with this year's class is how strongly it skews toward the 80s. I mean, I grew up on that music, so I certainly have an affinity for the era. There's part of me that feels it's a bit too soon for some of these 80s acts, but that has more to do with me perhaps being in denial of my age than anything having to do with them. In my Rock Hall snubs video, I made the case for Duran Duran, who I think are long overdue for induction. Yet it is hard to believe, or perhaps more accurately hard to accept, that they were part of the soundtrack of my teenage years. The same goes for the Eurythmics, Pat Benatar, Lionel Richie, and even Carly Simon and Dolly Parton had a strong presence in that decade. So. Yeah, it really does feel like a time warp of sorts. In any case, I don't have many complaints about these acts being inducted. Like Duran Duran, Pat Benatar is long overdue, and it's worth noting that she's actually being inducted along with her longtime musical partner and husband, Neil Giraldo. That's a nice touch, and credit where credit is due. Lionel Richie is also overdue for the honor, especially when you consider his time with the Commodores. Unfortunately for his former bandmates, this solo induction all but erases their chances of being inducted in the future. And then there's Carly Simon, the act I was most shocked to see on the list of nominees because I could not believe she wasn't in the Rock Hall already. And I don't mean that in a snub sort of way. I mean, she's an act that, without checking my notes, I kind of assumed had been inducted years ago. Eurythmics is the one inductee that stumped me, though. Don't get me wrong, I love their music, and I think it's a shame that Dave Stewart always seemed to be in the shadow of Annie Lennox when they both deserve the spotlight equally. Still, I've never felt that their contribution to rock and roll, which for all intents and purposes only spanned the 80s, quite reached the threshold of the honor. I felt that a nomination for the duo was the appropriate level of recognition, but obviously both the fans and the Rock Hall disagreed, and I'm okay with that. But speaking of the 80s, let's talk about Judas Priest. This is a band that actually formed in 1969, but I'd say reached their commercial peak during the 1980s. I predicted 2022 would be their year, and a long overdue recognition of metal by the Rock Hall. 
but in a surprising move, the Hall is inducting Judas Priest under the category of musical excellence rather than the performer category. As much as the Rock Hall continues to emphasize that induction is induction, regardless of category, it still feels a bit of a slight to see great acts unable to garner enough support from the voting members. Remember, the special categories of musical excellence and early influence are awarded at the discretion of the nominating committee, so they have nothing to do with the votes. On the one hand, I appreciate how those categories are used to honor people like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, but then it makes it feel more like honorable mention when they're used for acts that have been nominated as performers. So, congrats to Judas Priest and bravo to the Rock Hall Nominating Committee for making this happen. But shame on the voting members of the Rock Hall for not doing the right thing years ago. All right, well, to wrap things up, I feel like I need to express my bottom line opinion about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a whole, which is that ultimately nominations and inductions are based on an imperfect system. Huge understatement, right? There's no shortage of music fans that absolutely despise it as an institution, not to mention a number of artists as well. As for me, and I've said this before, I just don't take it all that seriously. In most cases, I tend to agree that the acts inducted are worthy of recognition, but it is undeniable that there are many, many more that are also worthy, but continue to be overlooked. And I have to admit, I enjoy the annual debate about who should slash shouldn't or who will slash won't be inducted. The key word there is enjoy, because that's the whole point of music, isn't it? I honestly don't let any nominations, inductions, or snubs make me angry because it's just not worth it. And in any case, I always look forward to watching the ceremony itself, which always guarantees at least a few great one-of-a-kind performances. This year's ceremony takes place in Los Angeles on November 5th, with a broadcast coming to HBO and HBO Max not long after that. It should be a night to remember, regardless of where you stand in the annual debate over who's in and who's been snubbed. But as always, I welcome your comments on the subject. Do you agree with this year's winners? How do you feel about the extra categories? Who do you think is the biggest snub? And is there anyone in the class of 2022 that you think hasn't earned their spot? Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Once again, my name is Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Plus, check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.